All right, God bless him. You know, I'm a grandchild of immigrants. I'm like, wow, he's driving a cab in New York City two weeks from Haiti. My God, that's awesome. You know? And then I'm thinking, like, it's snowing. <laughs> time this guy's ever seen snow. <laughs> and, and just as I make that connection, sure enough, we get through like the second light, the car goes. <laughs> the car spins out, slams up against the curb, <laughs> stalls. Guy looks and goes, I no fucking drive. I go, um, I gotta get to another show, I'll drive. He goes, okay. <laughs> Right? So I get in the front seat, he gets in the back, meter's running, I drive to another comedy club, I get out, I pull up at the, at the other club, the door opens up, I get out of the front, he gets out of the back, I pay him. <laughs> and he drives away. And all the other comedians are standing there, they're like, oh, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I go, that, my friends, is America. That's what... <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think everything's a little better with, uh, we have a president, African-American president now. It's, uh, it's the things are a little more, you know, and, and he like inspired everybody with race right away. I mean, he just took it on, you know? Obama, when he was running for, you know, for president, he just came right out and he challenged white people to understand black rage. And he asked black people to understand white resentment. And if we can understand these two things as a people, we can begin to understand my first marriage. Because, uh, <laughs> well, so, and, and Romney, then, Romney, he's got to loosen up if he's going to try to take out Obama, my God, it's a little stiff. <laughs> Get him a yoga class or something. I don't know. So every time I see him speak, he's so stiff, I'm afraid his head is gonna go back and like a big giant Pez is gonna shoot out of his neck. <laughs> uh, President Obama came out for gay marriage. That's uh, wonderful, yeah. One gay person, thank you. Uh, boy, you were alone on that one. No, good. No, I, you know, uh, Heterosexuals get divorced at a rate of 52% in this country. Um, and uh, so I think, you know, we should let gays get married. First of all, how can you regulate something like two people loving each other, you know? And maybe they'll improve our odds, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they'll up the curve, you know? And if it's the thought of gay sex that repulses you, well, let them get married so they stop having sex like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> because most of my gay friends, I think all of my gay friends are all men. You know? They're like great guys, like, you know, have great parties, they're great wingmen. You know? Great wing, and I'm, I'm thinking, like, I don't have any gay women friends. I really should think about that. Because I always feel like gay women don't like me. I always get that feeling, you know? Like, whenever I'm at a party and there's some lesbians there, I always feel like they're in the corner looking at me going, look at him, look at him with his penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how's it going, ladies? Hey. I'm always afraid they're, like, this far away from going, get him! And then she's like, oh, isn't that every guy's fantasy? I'm like, what? She goes, oh, you know, two women going at it. I'm like, no, no, that's not my fantasy. I, how did that happen, guys? How did that start? Like, to, if, if two women were going at it and I walked into the room, hopefully they'd look at each other and go, oh, good, you're here. <laughs> I'm gonna watch two women and be like, yeah, this is fun. Maybe I'm after me because I never get a chance to do that. <laughs> And think about it, like, like guys, like, how can you run for office now with what they're doing? Because, like, I've done too much shit wrong in my life to ever get elected for anything. Like, I mean, first day I'd, like, announce I'm going to run for Congress. First day they'd be like, Mr. Flynn, yes, is it true you got in a fist fight over a piece of pizza? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I, I, how'd you hear about that? <laughs> it's on your permanent record. Holy shit, there really is one of those things? <laughs> That we'd like to explain yourself, Mr. Flynn. Like, um, I don't know, I was like 20 and we had a couple of beers and my friends and I had a pizza and my friend Mike took too many pieces and so I punched <laughs> So, Mr. Flynn, let me get this right. You were an underage, a minor, who had obtained illegal alcohol and then you assaulted a fellow student. Like, holy shit, never heard it like that before. <laughs> the skill set that it takes for a woman to get into like Congress or Senate, it's always different for a guy. The guy always gets cocky. You know, it's like Anthony Weiner. What happened to him? You know? <laughs> guy's a congressman, takes a picture of his dick. You know what I mean? You guys are in the Navy. You're not taking pictures of your dick, sending them out on the Facebook. You know? I'm a divorced kid. Well, maybe you are. I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> hey, let's see 36 days, dude. I, uh, 
I'm a divorced comedian, I'm not taking pictures of my dick. But you know what the one thing he said? That like every guy in the room knew he was lying, you know why? Now women, you probably weren't sure, but guys knew because they come out, they show him the picture, he goes, I'm, I don't know if that's me. <laughs> right? Every guy was bullshit, that's fucking like him. Because uh, if there's one thing that guys know what it looks like, it's our own dick. I know my own dick from every angle, every place, every place, everywhere. I could be on the space shuttle looking back at Earth. And I could be like, that's the great one we're trying to, that's my dick. But the other one. Hey, happy Kevin Flynn. You guys have been wonderful.